In this lesson, I'm going to show you a number of different nodes that you can use to adjust your textures and your masks. As I mentioned in the opening video, I have a number of layers which I've gone ahead and masked with these paint chips. So if I just show you again, what I've got is I've got this base steel metal, and then over the top I've got this painted blue material. And then I have this mask here, which I use to determine where the paint is being chipped away to reveal the metal underneath. And I achieve this in two stages. The first stage is that I use this curvature breakup on the edge of my model, which I've demonstrated to you in the previous curvature and dirt lesson. And then I've also added some larger paint damage, which you can see here, which defines where stones might have hit the bike and caused the paint to chip to reveal the metal underneath. And this is the mask here, which I'm going to demonstrate a number of ways that you can adjust and remap your masks to get the effect that you're looking for. So the two nodes I'm going to show you are this Pixar threshold and this Pixar remap node. And the way I'm going to demonstrate it is I've plugged them both into a Pixar mix so that I can solo this node specifically. And then I can then blend between the outputs of each of those two nodes. So I'm just going to bypass this Pixar threshold node for a minute to show you what the map looks like originally. This is a map that I've created myself in Photoshop. I found an old bike in the garage, took it outside, and I took some pictures of the chips and the damage that had happened to it. And then within Photoshop, I've kind of quickly patched them together. OK, so now I've shown you what the map looks like originally. Let me drive it through this Pixar threshold node. So if I take the output and then I put it into my color one of my mix, we're only seeing what happens on the output of this threshold. So let me run you through these options. And the first one we have here is input color. And we've input our texture map here into input RGB. Now the second option here is which channel you want to control. And you have a number of options. You've got the red, green, and blue. And you've got luminance. And you've also got the average of all the channels as well. So the magic really happens in these next two parameters. And the threshold here basically dilates and erodes this black mask. So if I lower the value, you can see here that we've dilated our input map. And then if I increase the value, we basically start to erode it. And this is roughly where the value was for my paint chips. So I eroded away a lot of the information that was already in the detail. And this transition width, what this does is it allows you to smooth the edges. And if I just zoom into one of these pieces here, I can demonstrate this a bit easier. So let's have a look at this piece here. Just draw a region around it. So now if I go ahead and I lower the transition width, and it may be a bit difficult to see, what I actually end up with is a much harsher edge to my map. And then if I go ahead here and increase this transition width, it then starts to add a bit more of a smooth transition. And then I've also got extra control over my transition width by going between these various options here as well. And so the beauty about the Pixar threshold node is it's really good at making harsh edges and very stark black and white maps out of your input textures. And so that's it for the threshold. It's pretty simple but very powerful. And now I'm going to show you how the Pixar remap node works. And so the first thing I need to do is I'm going to change the input of this mix to 1, which is now basically meaning that we're looking only at this Pixar remap input. And I'm just to zoom out a bit so we can see a bit more. And just adjust my region. OK, so let's go ahead here and have a look at this Pixar remap. And this is a really useful node for doing subtle adjustment to your maps and textures. And if you're used to using the levels node within Photoshop, it works in a very similar way. And the way I like to think about it is it's a three stage process. The first stage here allows me to adjust my min and max ranges of my input. And in this case, it's this paint chips texture, which you can see here. And then these two remap options here, the bias allows me to change my midtones and the gain allows me to change my highlights. And then the third process here, it allows me to give my final tweaks to my output. And actually, this is where you can invert it as well. At this top here, you can see that I've got input min and input max. And this is where I can start to do fine adjustments to the lower and the higher ranges of my input texture. And then the next one here is that I can now start to increase or decrease the values within my midtones. So if I go higher on this, my midtones start to increase. 
And in the same way as if I lower the bias down, I now have started to get rid of my midtones. Put that back to the middle. And then the gain controls the highlights of my image. So if I increase it, you can see that my highlights are getting more. And then if I reduce it, the highlights are lessening as well. The next thing, and this output range allows me to do final control at the end. And one thing it does allow me to do is it allows me to invert this output. So if I just put one and zero, you can now see that what this output allows me to do is invert my output. I can still affect my gain and bias controls to get my map how I want it. So I know this has been a very quick overview of the Pixar threshold and the Pixar remap nodes, and they are incredibly useful, but the best way to learn them is just really to dive in and start having a play with them and see what you can do with your input textures. Thank you.